How you doing YouTube? Matt Massive Beer Reviews back with yet another review. Actually a beer I'm super curious about in the form of Dogfish Head's Slighty Mighty Locale IPA. Um, yeah, I heard about this. I mean, if you're in a beer, you've heard about this. Um, I heard about this not too long ago and I was kind of super intrigued because listen, if you can give me kind of impactful IPA goodness, uh, a healthier it's not healthy but healthier kind of uh format lower carbs lower calories all that stuff i'm all for it so you know uh, dogfish head is known for kind of taking swings at stuff like this but there's a lot of breweries kind of rushing to this market avery's doing one there's a couple people kind of trying to get into that kind of fit category when it comes to kind of ipas even avery last year they i think it was i forget what it was called they did um like an ipa with electrolytes in it um Anyway, um, it's kind of it just intrigues me because if you can produce that that impactful greatness of an IPA in a small package like this, I think it's going to be a winner. Um, this is actually made with monk fruit. It says down here, India Pale Ale brewed with monk fruit extract. I'm a little bit familiar with that. My brother-in-law um, is like a super health nut, and he's like totally okay with like the monk fruit portion of the show there's this like chemical inside of it basically what it is is um it is uh your body can't process it it comes off tastes like sugar everything works like sugar bakes like sugar coasts like sugar the whole nine but when you eat it your body can't process that so i assume they're kind of putting that in here um to bring up that sweetness which is dropping your calories doing all that stuff anyway supposedly better for you but does it taste good that's our whole portion here we're talking about the beer we're not talking about any kind of keto bullshit so what does it say in here slightly money locale ipa india pale ale brewed with monk fruit extract it's four percent alcohol by volume the back here it says this locale ipa is brewed with aromatic hop varieties that deliver tropical hot notes slightly sweet balance provided by that monk fruit extract and that's pretty much it this was canned like three weeks ago and that's pretty much it let's just crack in a sucker See what this has to offer. I actually sought this out. I was trying to find this. Um, I knew it was to market, and about a couple weeks ago, I just couldn't find it. But I was out at my buddy Chris's house um, watching the NFL draft, and I left. And um, I was like, I don't have any beer at home. Let me stop at this local, like, little bodega place that's, like, super close to where he lives. And lo and behold, they have it. Um, I mean, it kind of looks like an IPA. It's got a soft haze to it, nothing too crazy. It's got a big kind of particulate floating around there. Hopefully, you can pick that up on camera with just, you know, a quarter eighth of a pinky finger of a tight, white, compact head. So, yeah, sure. She looks the part of a pale ale IPA. Let's see if she has a nose. There's a soft sweetness to it. A soft, malty sweetness, a soft, maybe if anything, biscuity style sweetness to it. There's really not much as far as a hop impact in there. Sure, there's a little soft citrus notes. And, and ever so slight is bittering, but it comes off more of a like Pilsner Kolsch kind of impact from the malt and hop aspect and something that is mighty aromatic hop varieties deliver tropical notes with a slightly sweet bounce. Not really getting that big aromatic quality off of it. But she smells, you know, like a little bit jacked up version of a Kolsch. Let's put it that way. Nothing too bad. It smells okay. Let's dive in. Cheers. Hmm. She kind of comes off similar, but different. There's a sweetness there. It's not overly sweet by any stretch of the imagination, but she's sweet. Um, and there's a bittering component, but man, I don't know if that's bittering coming from the hops, though. The sweetness doesn't come off as like a residual sugar and, and extract sweetness. It comes off as a malty sweetness, and there's this little pop, actually. After you take a sip and let it go for a bit... The added sweetness, so there's not too sweet in the taste. Once you let everything kind of dry out and just sit there, you start to get the sweetness kind of building in the back of your palate. And assuming that that's, that's that monk fruit at play, because I've never really gotten that in beer before, to have that residual sweetness kind of carry on and come out from the back end of the beer. There's a bittering to it, but it's like it's it's more like a carbonated like it's not carbonic acid bittering but it's slightly seltzery bittering i i don't know if it's really coming from the hot portion of the show uh, 
it's weird. It's almost like a seltzer beer. It's like um, like almost like he did like a like a mixture of like a Lacroix um kind of thing and a slower, impactful IPA. That's kind of how it comes off to me. It's something a bit more seltzery, a bit more soda. It's not like alcohol pop, but it's it's still beer. But it's it's definitely like when you swallow it, you can hear all the individual kind of carbonated bubbles kind of popping along your tongue. So it gives you that kind of slightly kind of soda vibe. Yeah, you can kind of feel it too. Yeah, it's a weird one. Um, it's not a negative beer. I don't think it's a bad beer by any means. I don't know. That's a weird. That's a weird thing to say. I don't think it's a bad beverage. That's kind of where it goes for me. I don't think it's a bad beverage. Is it a bad beer? It's very beer adjacent almost. And then it's like I said, it's kind of a combination of a hopped up kind of Kolsch beer mixed with like a Lacroix kind of thing going on. To where it gives you this kind of slightly soda, slightly seltzery beer version of a hopped up kind of beer. But the hops aren't super impactful. You tell you know there's hops involved, you know there's malt involved, you know it's a beer driven product, but it just gets too close to that alcohol poppy range. So when you talk about like a lot of those alcohol pops, like you're not your father's, all that kind of stuff, it's definitely just malt driven beverage that is an alcoholic kind of soda pop. This is kind of like a beer that is just slightly kind of veering in that direction. It's not negative. Um, that that drying seltzer thing can come off a little bit harsh for people. It gets kind of close there for me. So I don't think it's a winner in that aspect. But you're talking about something that's, you know, sub 100 calories, relatively low carbs. And again, not to repeat myself, but relatively impactful as far as what you typically expect from a beer, whether from malts and hops, even though that monk fruit is kind of dummying it up, but it does it in a really good way. So I'm going to say right now, I think the monk fruit is doing a really good job of mimicking the sweetness you would get from the malt without kind of letting you know it's something, I don't want to use the word nefarious, but something outside of typical maltness. The only way you will know that's happening is when you stop drinking it. And I haven't tasted it for, you know, took a sip for over a minute now, probably. And I have this kind of sweet residual sweetness all around the inside of my mouth on the edges of my tongue. And that's how you know there's like that saccharine version of a sweetness going on. You, not that it's saccharine sweet, but you know what I mean? An artificial sweetener going on. It's it, it's unique. It, I don't want to poop on it and say it's a horrible beverage, but at the same time, I don't think it's a good IPA. I've had much more impactful IPAs that it's a lower ABV, but that's not what it's trying to be. It's trying to be something that's healthier. Again, not healthy, but healthier and is an IPA. And here's where I think the big trouble lies is that we don't actually, no one really tells you what the calorie or carb count is on a lot of beers. So I couldn't really sit here and be like, well, this is kind of sort of close to this beer, so I would prefer that beer with a little bit higher sugar content and carb content than this at a slightly lower carb content. I don't have that kind of information to kind of go off of. And any information I get online is just that. It's just information. It's not like an actual, like, um, legitimized kind of, um, you know, ingredient nutritional value count. Not that I want tr nutrition on beers. It's the last thing I want a beer. It's beer. Listen, if you're worried about nutrition, you're in the wrong game. But, knee-jerk reaction, I, did, I hesitate to think this would be far off from a Kolsch, a really well done Kolsch, or a purposely not over the top Kolsch, and I think it's a much more, that would be a much more desirable, authentic drink than this, even though this would come under those kind of benchmarks that they're trying to hit here with the calories and the carbs. I, I don't know how much robust, I don't know if it's double the amount of calories, double the amount of carbs of the Kolsch, but a well done Kolsch, I think, does a much better job of being a beer than this one does. That gap with carbs and calories, it, 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 that's going to be on you, whether that is an okay thing to bridge. But in the grand scheme of things, like I said, if someone can accomplish a kind of healthier version of a beer and really bring that, those delicious bits and pieces that we all love when it comes to beer, you know, hops and malt and yeast and all that fun stuff, I would be all for it, but 
this is definitely missing the mark for me. Especially the longer I go without drinking it and the more I get that kind of residual sweetness on the tongue. It just kind of screams at you louder and louder that there is something more to it than just beer. So let's talk about it. Is it one of the better? Because we're going to talk about it in the beer format. Is it one of the better lower ABV IPAs that I've had as late? No. Definitely on the outside. Uh, value availability. I forget what I paid for this. I think I, I, think I bought a 12-pack. I did. I didn't think I did. I bought a 12-pack of this for 20 bucks. Eh, it is what it is. I'm fine with it. I'll have barbecue, throw it out in the house. People will dig it. And leave you with, if you like what we like this. Honestly, if you like low ABV kind of uh, slightly bittering IPAs and you love LaCroix. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce that shit. Um, and you wish there was a mixture of the two. That's kind of what you're getting in here. You are getting that soft saccharine sweetness thing. More you don't drink it, but while you're drinking it, you're not getting it. So as long as you keep drinking, you're good to go. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a bad beverage, but it's, it's not a great beer. There you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little uh, slidey muddy or something a little bit better right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.